Okay, I've set up the super precision gyroscope on a record player turntable. Um, I'm basically testing a concept for a future experiment. But I also have the ability to just to show how bad even the dynamic uh, gimbal bearing friction is in this particular gyroscope. Now, unfortunately, due to lighting, I have to use a handheld camera so I don't want to haul up my lighting. Um, anyway, this is definitely, I mean, this is deliberately set to process, obviously. But I just want to demonstrate how you can see the procession change simply from the torque that gets applied at the base when I rotate the turntable. So I'm going to cut and uh, spool this thing up again. And you can see what I'm talking about. I'm back. And as you can see, the gyroscope is processing in a clockwise direction due to the torque induced by the counterbalance. Now, I can speed up the fall, or I can make it go the other way. Oh. Okay, <laughs> that was uh, unplanned. Let's uh, get E back in place. Alrighty, I'll just leave that in for comedic value. So, tell you what, I'm going to let this rev itself at 45 RPM. Oh, cut. Okay, that was a bit of a disaster. So let's get this, first of all, into a low point. And notice that the turntable, well, it was. Turntable's not getting any motion right now. That's cool. So weight's balanced to cause a clockwise procession. Let's get the turntable turning. 33 and a third RPM this time. And I'm still getting the same procession, but notice that the gyroscope is dipping. And now let's stop this before it crashes. <laughs> I'll sort of turn it on and off. Because that's what happens when it crashes. So let's let it process up again. Maybe I'll give it a little help. Action and reaction and all. Okay, so now let's do some torquey stuff to it. Not to be confused with twerking. So you can see a significant amount of torque is sent into the support bushing 
when the turntable is set to spin. Uh, I've got it at 33 and a third RPM, so I can do it slowly by hand, depending on a DJ, or I can make it go the other way. Now it is interesting, it does try to uh, maintain a constant procession in spite of the torque on it, which is very promising for the experiment I plan to do in the future, where the rotating base will be turning uh, exceedingly slowly. In fact, <laughs> hint, hint, sidereal day. Whoops. But as you can see, I can cause the dipping of the gyroscope to change simply by applying friction, dynamic friction, whoop, through the base of the gyroscope mechanism. Now, the precession rate also increases as the rotor slows down. And for my large experiment, I do intend to account for that. Now, you may criticize me for putting lots of additional weight on this gyroscope bearing, because that increases the normal force, which proportionally increases the torque from friction. And that is indeed true, but like I said, I have a secondary purpose to this experiment, and the gyroscope that I'll be using is set up in this fashion. So, there we go, I can control the gravity of the thing just by manipulating rotation at the base, i.e. applying a torque through the bushing. And procession rate is more or less the same, which is quite cool. I would love to do John Savage's experiment where he obtained a 24-hour clock, but I would like to do it with a continuous motion if I'm able to find the appropriate parts rather than something that has a ticking mechanism you know, like an escapement for timekeeping. Like a continuous motor with a worm gear and the appropriate gearing is really what I should be using. Oh well, this is spooled down to insufficient energy to do much. Although I can still get it to by applying high levels of torque. Still get it to do things. But the angular momentum has dropped considerably. Anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover, I think. So, bearing friction more of it, <laughs> or rather another way to demonstrate the effects of bearing friction. <laughs>